for the introduction. So, yeah. So I, I will try to cover different aspects of this uh, project which started like two years ago because we had to uh, do many developments. So it's not going to be uh, purely uh, math-oriented, yeah, math but I will give uh, just the ingredients to uh, explain what we want to do, the methodology, and the developments that were uh, required in Dolphin HPC. Because, um, oh, is it working? Is it down? Okay. Oh. Okay, um, because uh, we're not talking about the dolphin that you know, but a uh, slightly different animal, which is a primitive dolphin. <laughs> not good. Um, so I will first explain the context and the motivations behind um, this work around residual-based stabilizations, and then talk about two applications. One application on variable density flows, and one about compressible oiler. So the context um, of our group, so CTL at KTH, and also the um, spin-off in Bilbao, um, led by um, Johan Janssen, um, is developing um, high-performance implementation for adaptive finite element methods, covering different uh, types of applications. So I just provided a short list. Um, the main focus historically has been high Reynolds and compressible turbulent flows. But uh, we will see, um, uh, Johan will give a talk about applications in heart modeling. And uh, what concerns me is uh, variable density flows for geophysics and also uh, compressible flows. So what is Dolphin HPC? First, I need to explain that um, it's a parallel branch that was uh, created in 2007 um, as a parallel branch. So we don't have a Python interface. We only use Python for the code generation. Um, the code is different in many aspects, but the focus uh, has been put on performance on supercomputers. So early on, we had the distributed mesh um, with load balancing um, and parallel adaptive mesh refinement. And um, focus was also on I.O. on the supercomputer, so having a file format to read and write efficiently. Um, when it comes to supercomputers, some of them are really strange beasts. So we're stuck with uh, C++ 98. That makes a huge difference compared to the current Dolphin. These are basically two different programming langu languages in a, in a way. Um, and so we really aim at uh, supporting um, a wide range of um, kind of oldish architectures or exotic architectures, be it uh, supercomputers or uh, yeah, some hobbyist platforms. One thing, um, we support two um, linear algebra backends. One is PETC, the standard, so in a um, hybrid MPI open MP setting. Uh, the scaling, strong scaling was showed up to a uh, 7K uh, process. And the other backend developed by Niklas Janssen is based on unified parallel C and scales up to um, 12,000 process. And uh, the program model is different. It's a shared memory model. Um, so basically what we have is we're lagging behind the Python things because it's a lot of work to maintain for us since the interfaces are different. So, so far we use Fiat 1.3. So you have the regular ecosystem, just the versions are a bit uh, behind. Um, yeah, UFL 1.0.x, FFC 1.0.x, UFC. We try to update uh, the UFC interface to be compliant with um, recent code, but again, it's uh, always a game of catching up. So uh, the main, um, yeah, the main features in the coming release that we, we will put on, uh, on um, Bitbucket repository is we, we try to uh, catch up with the compliance with the Python modules. Still not good, but we're trying. Um, I implemented parallel interior facet assembly. Um, mixed element and subsystem support in parallel that you, you, you might have already in, in Dolphin. 
um, but we like that. Uh, we implemented some uh, UF C++ version of some UFL abstractions to work with the finite elements. So we basically play with the signatures that I know uh, have evolved, but uh, that was yeah, a way to, uh, to actually uh, get some information from the finite elements. And yeah, some uh, spin-off projects that is a uh, um, solver application framework. So this is our main playground, Pesco. Um, as well uh, processors. Um, this is a quite interesting machine. Uh, 53,000 cores. So the motivations, historically, the laboratory has been concerned with uh, simulation of high Reynolds turbulent flows uh, with um, an approach coined sometime <coughs> as implicit LES, which means that um, turbulence modeling just is embedded in the numerical scheme. There's no explicit physical subgrid uh, modeling. We just rely on numerical stabilization to uh, represent the small scales. So this is the beginning of the story. So we, in that way, we consider uh, the Navier-Stokes equ Navi equations as some regularization of Euler equations. So we just consider uh, viscosity is zero. We stabilize, and that's our uh, uh, turbulence model. So the general Galarkin um, model, which is the reference in the, in the group, was based on streamline diffusion um, stabilization, uh, linear Lagrange approximation, equal order, velocity, pressure. And um, then the question like, was, yeah, can we also try something else and go higher order? <coughs> so if we go back to uh, conservation law, you know that Galer King um, isn't stable because it's, it corresponds to a centered approximation. So you, there are different strategies at hand. Galer King least square. I just write it down for the sake of completeness. Streamline diffusion, um, SUPG, with uh, possibly a shock capturing term, which is basically elliptic uh, regularization with some isot isotropic viscosity. And um, another class of uh, stabilizations is um, nonlinear uh, viscosities based on the residual. So you can, choose, you can choose your viscosity epsilon as just some function <coughs> of the residual of the equation, uh, bounded uh, from above by the upwind viscosity, first order viscosity. <coughs> so uh, C1H, uh, a norm of U. Or you can uh, choose um, to use the ingredients coming from the, um, the paper by Di Perna, measure value solution for conservation laws. And the ingredients to uh, yield existence of a solution is boundedness of the solution, a strong consistency to initial data, and weak consistency to entropy inequalities. And these entropy inequalities, they're actually a way to select the physical solution. So, this uh, entropy residual is there to make sure that we actually select uh, um, the, the physical solutions um, while following the sequence of discrete solutions. Um, well, uh, what did I want to say? Yeah. Uh, for instance, for LES models, this corresponds to uh, enforcing lo local energy dissipation, for instance. And for uh, compressible flows, it means just uh, capturing the shocks properly. So basically, uh, stabilizing where things happen. So why this interest is that um, there, it has been proven that uh, only the um, isotropic uh, diffusion is necessary to, to yield convergence of the scheme in the case of streamline diffusion uh, with shock capturing term. Also, that the, shock capture, the streamline diffusion term can yield uh, a convergence to non-entropic solution, so non possibly non-physical solution. So we want to play a little bit more with this, uh, this um, entropy-based stabilizations. 
So uh, we have two projects at hand. Um, one is uh, variability flows for uh, geophysics. It's a project with Caspar Muller, a PhD student in our, in our group. So we just uh, do simple things. Um, just take a um, simple uh, model for a two-phase flow, uh, water and um, air. Um, so just mass balance, uh, momentum, uh, continuity constraint. And then we ask ourselves how to uh, stabilize the mass equation. Um, in the case of uh, high Reynolds uh, flow, uh, we also need to stabilize the momentum equation. So different questions come. Uh, what about the positivity, the boundedness of the density? Um, how to uh, cope with large density differences? Um, enforce the continuity constraint uh, properly? So well, I forgot to say we we are in a continuous the continuous finite element world. So we only use Lagrange in our setting. So we cannot resort to uh, divergence free element elements or so on. We just want simple things. Uh, keep working uh, with linear elements and higher order Lagrange elements. But uh, get something maximum principles uh, um, entropy. Uh, like stabilization which yields uh, entropy solutions. So we chose to um, use a splitting scheme devised by uh, Germain and Salgado. Um, so it's basically the same uh, scheme uh, as any uh, projection time stepping uh, um, uh, time-stepping uh, scheme. Uh, first, density update, uh, then the momentum prediction, then penalty projection. Why penalty projection? Because here we don't actually enforce uh, strict divergence free constraints. Um, to relax the fact that the, the density uh, is not constant, um, which would yield a uh, Poisson problem which is difficult to solve, we just introduce this parameter uh, key, uh, which is defined as the minimum uh, density. And uh, Germain Salgado proved that the, our estimates um, are actually uh, um, adequate. And then finally, a pressure correction. I really simplified the notations. Um, you can see that this scheme is written in a general fashion for BDF1 and BDF2. Anyway, there's no need to go above BDF2 because the there's a splitting error which is of the of order uh, delta t square, but uh, yeah, uh, this beta coefficient and definition of rho hat u hat and p hat define the BDF scheme, and um, rho tilde u tilde and p tilde are uh, uh, appropriately chosen uh, extrapolations to yield good error estimates. So the development required was first, uh, for this type of scheme, we need uh, insubstable uh, finite elements. So um, go with the classic P2, P1. But in initially, they were not implemented in parallel in Dauphin HPC. So it required playing a bit with the DOF maps. Um, and second, um, the construction of the, the viscosity to start easily. Um, so you can choose your viscosity in any discrete space, basically DG0. You can take a CG space. So the natural uh, thing would be to take either a DG0, either the same space as the velocity or the density. Yep. Um, but in that case, we started simply with DG0 approximation for the, um, the viscosity. Prime it yields uh, oscillation, so we need to, we needed to add uh, the jump term, which should be there. Um, so um, these two viscosities, mu and nu, they are basically the mean of mu h and uh, mu max on all the, the elements. So it required the implementation of jumps in parallel and uh, other. Uh, uh, data structures to uh, synchronize finite element distribution um, contributions. 
and also impossibility to generate uh, entropy residuals with UFC1, which motivated uh, move to UFC2 in the first place. So we did we followed the usual methodology. First, uh, some manufactured solution, positive flow in a channel, then some retailer instability for different Reynolds number and different Atwood num numbers. To the Atwood number being uh, the relative uh, density difference between the two fluids, so the heavy fluid on the top and lighter fluids um, at the bottom. Uh, for this test case, we have no slip boundary uh, at the top and bottom and uh, perfect slip on the sides. Um, and uh, we showed that th there's good agreement with numerical experiments aside from the pattern of the, this, uh, this role. Uh, but that's something that is also quoted by Guillermo in his paper. So that should be in investigated further. Um, Kaspar took part in a um, workshop uh, last year. Um, um, simulation of a tsunami, so then break problem. Um, initially, you have a tank filled with water. Um, the experimental, experimental setup is uh, 30 meters long. Um, time zero, the wall uh, breaks. And uh, the goal was to uh, compute the, the drag um, on, the, on the bridge. So we started with, uh, or he started with uh, 25,000 uh, vertex uh, mesh and 2,000, uh, 200,000 for the last one. And the results were qualitatively okay, but not satisfying. So we need to investigate further. The second project, uh, which is actually more, uh, um, yeah, which is basically rooted in the conservation law business, uh, is uh, system, so compressible oiler, so system of conservation laws, um, mass conservation, momentum uh, conservation, and uh, energy, total energy. Uh, with Moltaso, we're trying two different regularization for uh, the Euler equation. Um, the bottom one is the Navier-Stokes regularization, which is the classical one but uh, violates uh, positivity principle. Um, so we're trying a Gamon-Popov regularization. And this regularization has been used in all the simulations. So um, for the discretization, uh, we played with P1 to P4 uh, for the moment. Uh, we use an explicit scheme, Arungekuta 3 SSP. Uh, the stabilization is as before, uh, the mean of upwind viscosity and entropy viscosity with the entropy de uh, defined by S. Uh, we also took a DG0 um, viscosity and added the jumps. Also, an important thing is the use of uh, strong slip boundary condition. Uh, use of the weak um, slip boundary condition uh, incurs uh, um, restrictive CFL condition. Um, so this, uh, this actually um, demanded to uh, develop the subsystem thing, mixed element stuff uh, in Dolphin HPC, everything in parallel, uh, rewrite uh, sleep BC to support higher order elements. And also since we cannot save uh, higher order elements to VTK, uh, write some uh, general uh, um, interpolation uh, functions uh, that I wrote on non-matching meshes, so we're safe for the future. Um, yeah, so well, what I said basically, uh, extend the not normals, so to, uh, and for sleep BC we need to, to build a finite element field uh, representing the normal and the, 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 uh, the basis made of the tangential uh, vectors as well. Um, and last thing, we, we, we have to deal with several residuals with different polynomial results, different uh, dimensions. So uh, I wrote some wrappers to generate uh, the code for multiple spaces and generate the, the wrappers in C++. So we can uh, just pass the polynomial order as argument at the solver at the beginning and just uh, select everything. Uh, we don't have just-in-time co uh, compilation, so everything is pre-generated, compiled, and then selected at runtime. So we need some wrappers to, to be able to do that. Again, methodology, um, as usual, analytical solution on the shock tube yields uh, first order um, uh, convergence for L1. 
We also try win forward uh, step, wind tunnel, uh, which is good result even on coarse meshes. The top mesh uh, is actually 8,000 uh, vertices, and we already captured in instability. That is at the top, uh, Kelvin and Moss instability. And then, um, yeah, I just prepared some, uh, some videos, basically, just for uh, eye candy. I still a good thing to show you. Okay, it actually works. I saw something. So this is the density for the MAC-10. So it's a MAC-10 uh, double refraction uh, configuration. Uh, I think it's uh, 100K uh, vertices. And uh, the last one, uh, shock bubble interaction. So this one is just 1.5 million vertices, but uh, we we're now running uh, 4 million. It's actually uh, yeah quite fast with this explicit scheme. Uh, in in a day on 128 cores, it's uh, it's done. So yeah, I hope uh, I was not too confusing. I try to uh, give the ingredients and show uh, how the development in Dolphin HPC were related. So it's a parallel development solver, library solver, library. So I hope uh, I give a proper review of what we're doing. That's not the pointer, that's the microphone. Uh, yeah. So the next speaker is... Uh, Gerard Fuller, is that right? No, it's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not. Uh, I'm Johan Hoffman, I'm later in the... Yeah. Probably at last. Yes, Johan Hoffman. Uh, he's going to talk to us about...